Come on guys, let's now quickly revise accounting standard 11 which talks about effects of changes in foreign exchange rates. There are three parts in accounting standard 11. Part 1 which deals with foreign currency transactions. Part 2 which deals with foreign operations. Part 3 which deals with forward exchange contracts. Let's begin with part 1 which deals with foreign currency transactions. Before that, let me also quickly tell you what are the parts against which accounting standard 11 should not be referred. You will never refer accounting standard 11 for identifying foreign currency cash inflows or foreign currency cash outflows for cash flow statement. Why? Regarding to cash flow statement, we have a specific standard called accounting standard 3. So, you should refer AS3 and you should not refer accounting standard 11. And foreign currency difference to the extent it will be regarded as borrowing cost has to be treated as borrowing cost as per accounting standard 16. AS16 will specifically cover it. So, that is again not covered under accounting standard 11. Lastly, the most important point is foreign currency effective rate changes, whatever this AS11 is there, no. This is applied in converting foreign currency to home currency. This is not applied in converting home currency statements to foreign currency. So, we will apply AS11 in converting financial statements which are there in foreign currency to reporting or home currency. We will not apply AS11 in order to determine the financial statements which is prepared in home to foreign. It is not home to foreign. It is foreign to home. It is foreign to reporting currency. I hope you will got till here. Going ahead, the first part of the standard, which is what we are talking about in foreign currency transactions. What is a foreign currency transaction? It is a transaction which is denominated in foreign currency or which is to be settled in the future in foreign currency. It can be receivable, it can be payable, it can be income, it can be expense. It can be purchase or sale of goods, acquiring or disposal of assets, rendering or availing of services, borrowing or lending of money or it can also include forward exchange contracts. What is forward exchange contracts? We will come back to it slightly later. This transactions what we call as foreign currency transactions has to be dealt with in three stages. Stage 1, initial recognition. Stage 2, valuation at balance sheet date. Stage 3, treatment of exchange difference. Stage 1, initial recognition. The day when we do the transaction, we have to record both the aspects of the transaction. At the transaction date spot rate, the exchange rate that is prevailing between two currencies, on the date of transaction is the rate at which we will record both the aspects of the transaction. Let us say you buy inventory. Inventory in the form of purchase account debit, Creditors account credit both should be based on the exchange rate prevailing on the date of purchase. On the balance sheet date, we might have to restate certain items. Restate means item is there, but it is there at the rate which was there on the date of transaction. We need to give it a new value that is the value that is there on the closing date. Should we do it for all items? Answer is no. This is done restatement only for assets and liabilities, expenses and incomes which are originally recorded at the rate prevailing on the date of the transaction that is spot rate will remain at that rate. We will not change the value. However, on the balance sheet date, we will consider assets and liabilities because they were recorded on one date. Their value is not yet over. It is there in balance sheet and it will come to next year. So, these assets and liabilities we will ask ourselves whether this asset or liability is it monetary item or is it non-monetary item. What do you mean by monetary item? Monetary item is money held or assets and liabilities which can be expressed in fixed or determinable amounts of money. If it can be expressed in fixed or determinable amounts of money, monetary. What is non-monetary? Any item which is not monetary is non-monetary. If it is other than monetary, it is non-monetary. All the monetary items which were originally recorded at spot rate, that is transaction rate, should be revised to closing rate. Should be revised to, sir, what if the item is non-monetary? Non-monetary non items by default should not be restated. They will be recorded at the transaction rate, it will remain at transaction rate. Monetary items on the other hand are converted to closing rate, restated to closing rate. However, there are some special non-monetary items like inventory. Sometimes we record inventory at cost, Sometimes we record inventory at NRV. This is decided based on para 5 of AS2. We take whichever is less. If cost or NRV, whichever is less, turns out to be cost. Inventory is a non-monetary item. 
it should be continued to record at spot rate from the date of transaction. However, if the same inventory which is non-monetary item, it is not recorded historical cost, it is recorded NRV which is lesser than cost. Then this NRV is picked on the last date of the year. That last date, whatever is the prevailing exchange rate, like closing rate, that will be the value considered. Let me repeat, if the inventory is recorded historical rate, historical cost, then historical rate. If inventory is valued at NRV, then NRV dates exchange rate, closing rate. Not just for NRV, but any other item other than inventory also. If it is valued at fair value, then that fair values estimate date exchange rate will be considered for identifying the value. In short, monetary item closing rate, non-monetary item by default, original transaction date rate. If the monetary item is find uh, is recorded at fair value or NRV, then that fair value date rate will be considered. Contingent liability should be recorded at closing rate. In this restatement of monetary items and some non-monetary items, if in case we increase the value of the asset or decrease the value of a liability, that will result in exchange gain. If we have decreased the value of the asset or increase the value of the liability, it will result in exchange loss. This exchange gain or exchange loss by default should be transferred to PNL. Gain will be credited to PNL, loss will be debited to PNL. This is general by default case. Foreign exchange difference should go to PNL. However, there is a special case. This is an option given under para 46 and 46A of company, uh, sorry, for para 46 and 46A of accounting standard 11. This paragraph came into picture only from 31st of March 2009. You can scan that QR to read the official notification issued by MCA. So, what this notification says is, it gives an option to the company. If in case, they have a foreign currency monetary item in the form of long term loan. They have a foreign currency monetary item in the form of long term loan or borrowing. That borrowing was recorded at one rate. At the year end, rate increased. When the rate increased, the liability or the loan will be restated. That increased amount will be charged to PNL by default. If you don't avail the option under para 46A, you will anyways charge it to PNL. Para 46A gives you an option. Instead of charging it to PNL, you can add it to the cost of your asset. If you add it to the cost of your asset, the asset should be a depreciable asset. And that increased cost of the asset will be depreciated over the remaining useful life. This is if you choose the option and you have a depreciable asset. What if you want to take the option, you don't want to charge the foreign exchange difference to PNL, but very unfortunately, you don't have a depreciable asset. Then what to do? It will be returned to one dummy account called as FCMITDA, FICMITDA, Foreign Currency Monetary Item Translation Difference Account. The money will be kept there. And from FCMITDA, it will be transferred to PNL, not immediately, but it will be deferred over the loan period, little, little every year. Why do we take this para 46 a option? This is to ensure that there is no sudden impact of foreign exchange difference on PNL, converting a profitable PNL into loss making company. To ensure that that doesn't happen, we've been given an option to add it to the cost of depreciable asset. If that doesn't exist, FCMITDA and from there to PNL, little, little every year. This is with regard to foreign currency transaction. Next part, part 2 is foreign operation. What do you mean by foreign operation? You have a branch, you have an associate, you have a subsidiary, you have a joint venture outside the geographical boundaries of India. And that entity which is there outside India, it has already prepared financial statements in that foreign currency. Balance sheet, p &L, cash flow statement, everything is there in dollars. Now, in India, you need to inculcate, incorporate or consolidate that foreign operations financial statements. But the trial balance is there in dollars. You want the trial balance in rupees. So, you convert the trial balance which is there in dollars to rupees. That's what we mean by translation of foreign operations. The question here is, at what exchange rate should we convert dollars to rupees? The answer is not so simple. We cannot apply one rate for everything. We have to categorize the entity that is foreign operation into two. One, integral foreign operation. Two, non-integral foreign operation. Based on this classification, we are going to decide what rate to apply. How do we decide whether it is integral or non-integral? If the foreign operation is extension of Indian operations, it is integral. If the foreign operation is not extension of Indian operations, it is non-integral. I will give you better understanding. If the foreign operation has significant freedom, 
it is not integral it has its own way of doing things if the foreign operation can pay the expenses on its own if the foreign operation can collect the sale consideration in foreign currency on its own if the foreign operation can decide at what price to sell on its own if the foreign operation is not dependent upon india for money it can take foreign currency loan and then it can do its business basically an independent foreign business is non integral foreign operation and dependent foreign operation like it is dependent upon head office for everything it has huge number of transactions with head office it borrows money from head office it takes raw material from head office head office pays expense on behalf of the branch in that case the foreign branch is integral it is extended part of indian operations if it can work independently like a separate company it is non integral so why do we do this classification if it is an integral foreign operation then the transactions relating to assets liabilities expenses incomes all the items in trial balance are converted to rupees just like foreign currency transaction sir what do we mean when we say foreign currency transaction simple monetary items at closing rate non monetary items at transaction sorry monetary items at closing rate non monetary items at transaction rate expenses and incomes we should apply actual if actual is not available we'll apply average i'll repeat monetary items closing non monetary items transaction rate expenses and incomes we should apply actual if not available average that is if it is integral if it is non integral what is going to change will transfer items whether monetary or non monetary at closing rate non monetary items which would have been transferred at transaction rate in integral are converted at closing rate in non integral and the next point of difference is after we convert that dollar trial balance to rupee trial balance that new trial balance will not tally if in case it is integral foreign operation that exchange difference will be transferred to p and l why it is like my own extended operations difference in trial balance of integral foreign operation will be transferred to p and l however if it is a non integral foreign operation difference in trial balance which will arise will not be transferred to p and l instead it will be kept in foreign currency translation reserve account that will stay there till the time the foreign operation is closed the day the foreign operation gets closed that day this will get transferred to p and l or reserve i hope you all got this let's go to the last part uh, before that one small thing ppe as well as its depreciation should be recorded at purchase date rate inventory should be usually recorded at actual if actual is not available opening stock at opening rate closing stock at closing rate if actual is available should go by actual but usually actual will not be available don't worry last one forward exchange contract what is forward exchange contract it is contract between two parties it is contract between two parties to buy or sell two currencies on a future date at an agreed rate today i and you will sign a document saying that i will buy certain number of dollars from you after 3 months for a rate that we agree today that is forward contract how to do accounting for forward contract depends upon the purpose for which forward contract is entered into a person can enter into forward contract for two reasons number one to hedge the money market sorry to hedge his risk second option is to do speculation if i say hedging it basically means that i have a foreign currency exposure i have a liability to pay after 3 months or i have an asset to receive after 3 months and i am exposed to that foreign currency risk i want certainty so i will ask a dealer at what rate will you give me dollars after 3 months he agrees i am entering into a contract here to buy dollars because i need to pay someone this is for hedging the risk in this case out of the three rates which are available which is transaction date spot rate forward contract rate and settlement rate if the contract is for hedging i will consider spot rate and forward contract rate i'll ignore settlement rate i'll consider transaction rate spot rate and forward rate i will ignore settlement rate difference between transaction rate date spot rate and forward contract rate will be considered as premium or discount if it is more it is premium if the forward contract rate is more than spot it is premium if forward contract rate is less than spot it is discount that spot rate and forward contract rate difference is identified per dollar multiplied with the total contract value we'll get total forward contract premium 
that has to be transferred to PNL over the forward contract period, not on any specific date, not on the transaction date, not on the year end, not on the settlement date. It will be over the forward contract period. If the forward contract's entire period is in one accounting year, full premium or discount will go to that year. If forward contract is lying between two years, proportionately based on the time will transfer to PNL over both the years. This is if the forward contract is entered for the purpose of hedging the risk. Second one is forward contract will be entered into for speculation purpose. When I say speculation, I have no foreign currency payable. I am not a trader who is buying goods or selling goods. To me, business itself is money. I am entering into a contract with a forward exchange dealer or foreign exchange dealer with an intention to make profit because of foreign currency fluctuations. So, in this case, we will ignore the transaction date spot rate. We will only consider the forward contract rate and settlement date spot rate. Between the forward contract rate and the settlement date spot rate or settlement rate, difference whatever is there, that will become a profit or loss, that will be booked only on the date of settlement. We are not going to record it early. So, for a hedge transaction, we will take difference between spot rate and forward rate. For a speculation transaction, we take difference between forward rate and settlement rate. In hedge transaction, we will book forward contract premium or discount over the contract period. In a speculation transaction, we ignore forward contract premium. We do not write it over the contract period. All the entries are written only on the settlement date. And the settlement date profit or loss is determined as difference between forward rate and settlement rate. If the settlement rate and forward rate are different, that will be profit or loss. And where will it be transferred to? And which date will we write it on? Settlement, settlement date. And this covers your accounting standard 11.